Hi, thank you for your order. We're super excited for you to get started on your next adventure with Micro Safari Horizons. Included in the kit, you'll find the Horizons Trinocular Microscope, the Horizons HDMI Camera, Micro Safari Terra, Micro Safari Aqua, the Reflected Light Illuminator, a Dark Field and Oblique Illumination Filter Set, a Polarized Light Filter Set, Blank Slides and Cover Slips, Prepared Sample Slides, a rocket dust blower, and a lens tissue booklet. Using your microscope for the first time. In the microscope box, we have the microscope itself. We have two 25X eyepieces, two 10X eyepieces. This is a C-mount adapter for the camera going into the trinocular port. We have a dust cover, cable, a blue light filter, and a fuse for the microscope. This is the coarse focus, and this is the fine focus. Use the course focusing knob to move the stage all the way down and put one of your prepared sample slides onto the stage. It doesn't really matter which one, but I like the pine stem and I'm using it here. Plug in the microscope and turn on the transmitted light illumination switch. Rotate down the 4x objective. Move the stage using the X and Y knobs so that your sample is in the center. Look through the eyepieces and turn the course focus knob to move the stage up until you have an in-focus image. You should have a good image at this point, but we're going to do some optimizations to make it better. First things first, you're going to want to adjust the binocular head of the microscope so that the distance between your eyepieces matches the distance between your eyes. The easiest way to do this is to look through the microscope and play around with this until the circular image that each eye receives overlaps and it's easiest to look through the microscope. If, when you look into the microscope eyepiece with each eye individually, one is in focus and the other isn't, you'll want to adjust the diopter to bring both eyes into focus simultaneously. Moving on to optimizing the illumination. If you rotate the knurled area of the condenser, it'll move the whole condenser up or down. You'll almost always want to have it all the way up. Then on the side, you have the iris adjustment lever. Quick terminology lesson, this might be called an iris, an aperture, or a diaphragm. Each word technically means something slightly different, but for now, just know that they basically all mean the same thing in this context. Look through the eyepieces while adjusting this lever to see how it changes the way that the image looks. As a rule of thumb, having the condenser iris all the way closed will give the highest contrast. So for example, if you're looking at a bacteria that's barely visible, closing down the condenser iris will make the edges of the bacteria much more visible. The downside is that closing the condenser iris will also make any dust that's inside of the microscope optical train appear much more visible. This also increases the depth of field, aka how thick of a slice of your sample is in focus at any given time. You'll also note that changing the iris changes the brightness of the image, although you typically don't really want to use the condenser to change the brightness if possible. That job goes to the brightness adjustment knob located on the side of the microscope. Okay, let's move up to a higher magnification. You can rotate down the 10x objective. You'll have to readjust the focus, the condenser iris, and the brightness. Unfortunately, you basically have to do this every time that you use a different objective, whether you're using the Horizons microscope or any other microscope. Okay, let's move up one more time, now to the 40x objective. You can repeat all the previous steps. Now things get tricky when we want to move up to the 100x objective. This is an oil immersion objective. In your kit, you'll have a vial of immersion oil. This oil bridges the gap between the cover slip and the microscope objective to give you a higher resolving power. Put a drop of oil on the cover slip and rotate down the 100x objective, using the fine focus knob to very slowly bring the sample into focus. For maximum magnification, put in your 25x eyepieces for a full 2500x magnification. Once you're done, you'll need to clean off all of the oil from your objective before it dries, ideally within about an hour or two. You'll see instructions on this during the cleaning section later in the video. Setting up the camera. Great news! It's pretty straightforward to set up the camera. You'll want to remove the trinocular port cover and screw on the C-mount adapter into the port. Make sure you keep this cover because you'll want to replace it whenever you don't have the camera attached. You don't want to leave any open ports on your microscope. The C-mount adapter has an eyepiece adapter screwed onto it already, so you'll want to remove that. It's helpful to be able to look down into the trinocular port for troubleshooting, so that's the purpose of this adapter. Now, you can unscrew the cap from the camera and then screw the camera onto the port. There's a jam nut here, so you can rotate the whole C-mount adapter until the cable exit plugs face towards the back of the microscope, and you can tighten the jam nut down until everything is fully affixed. Plug in this power supply and plug one end of the HDMI cable into your camera and the other into a TV or monitor. If you're using a TV, you may need to switch the source over to whatever HDMI port you've plugged into. It should just work though. You can also use the camera via USB mode. Just connect to your computer with a USB cable and use it like a webcam. You don't need to install the software that's included in the CD-ROM in the box. On Windows, 
you can open up the camera app, and on Mac, you open up the photo booth app. You may need to switch cameras if you already have a webcam integrated into your computer. Use the included remote to control the camera, take photos, videos, and adjust settings to match your sample. I found that the out-of-the-box settings on the camera are actually pretty good, but it's worth going in and playing with the settings both on the camera and on the picture settings in your TV to get the best image for your microscope. If you happen to change the settings on your camera so bad and everything is messed up, you can always go to the factory reset button and change the settings back to how they were when you got it out of the box. Cameras typically like to have a lot of light for best image quality, so turning the LED all the way up and opening the condenser aperture may yield the best images with the least amount of noise. Using Micro Safari Aqua with Horizons. For instructions on how to find samples and fill Micro Safari Aqua, see the Micro Safari Aqua setup video. Otherwise, here's some general advice for using it with Horizons. Turn the side with the gas exchange polymer face down. This will give you the best image quality. Let the water settle for a couple minutes and for the debris and microorganisms to float down to the bottom of the slide. This is where you're going to find the most microorganisms. Microsafari Aqua only works with the 4X and 10X objectives because it's too thick to use the 40X and above. You'll typically want to use the microscope in transmitted light illumination mode. And typically, you'll want the condenser iris closed almost all the way down. Larger organisms and colorful algae will typically look the best in dark field mode. Using Microsafari Terra with Horizons. For instructions on how to care for Microsafari Terra, see the Microsafari Terra setup video. Otherwise, here's some advice for using it with Horizons. Move the stage all the way down and place Terra on top of the slide holder. I recommend starting in the very middle of the slide. You'll want to use the microscope in reflected light mode. Clamp the gooseneck light onto the back handle of the microscope and point the light at the viewing area and bring it as close as you can. The gooseneck light has a USB plug on it. You can plug this into any USB port to power it. You'll want to use Microsafari Terra with the 10x eyepieces and the lowest magnification objective to start. Like Aqua, you can only use the 4x and 10x objectives due to working distances. You'll notice condensation starting to happen wherever you shine the light. If you leave it in that spot for just a few minutes, the condensation will turn from tiny droplets that block the light into large droplets that can be viewed through and are pretty interesting in and of themselves. You can use the microscope stage to move around Microsafari Terra. Take care when manually repositioning Terra on the top of the stage. The acrylic can be scratched if you slide it directly on the metal while applying downward pressure. Don't worry about scratches too much though, they don't really substantially affect the optical quality of this sample. Using your dark field and oblique illumination filters. To change the microscope into dark field mode, start out with the standard transmitted light bright field. I like to use prepared sample slides to get my dark field setup aligned. Under the condenser is a filter holder. Place a dark field filter in the holder and rotate it into the condenser light path. At first, you won't see anything. You'll need to open up the condenser iris all the way. Here are a couple of dark field tips. This dark field setup works best on the 4X and the 10X objectives. The oblique illumination filters work exactly like dark field, but illuminate the sample from one direction, giving kind of a three-dimensional effect. If you're using the camera with dark field, you may need to manually adjust the exposure and darken the image until the background is as black as possible and your sample is not overexposed. Using the polarized light filters. There are a few ways to change your microscope into a polarized light microscope. If possible, try not to touch the polarizing light filters with your bare hands since light directly goes through the filter. For transmitted light polarization, insert the polarizing filter into the condenser filter holder. Now you have two options. You can either use the manual filter flag in between the top of the sample and the microscope objective, or for a hands-free solution, you can unscrew the head of the microscope and place the filter into the hole and replace the microscope head. To change the polarization angle, you'll need to rotate the polarizing filter in the filter holder or if you're using the manual flag, you can just rotate that. There are many samples that work well under polarized light conditions for testing and calibration. I recommend using nylon in some form, either bristles from your toothbrush or fishing line, placed on a microscope slide under a cover slip. Cleaning and maintenance. Cleaning and taking care of your microscope is a breeze if you follow these basic steps. Keep the dust cover on when not in use. Never touch any glass or lens or put it into direct contact with anything that could transfer oils or other contaminants onto the optics. Never wipe off optics with a microfiber cloth or lens tissue without first blowing off any loose dust. Don't use solvents to clean your microscope unless there's a reason to. Cover up open ports when you remove components. If you're using immersion oil, be super careful to never accidentally rotate your non-oil immersion objective into the oil. Promptly clean off the oil immersion fluid from your oil immersion objective after use. Removing dust. 
You're certainly welcome to use the Rocket Air Duster to remove dust from your lenses on your microscope as much as you want. There's not really any harm to doing extra dust removal. You can use a microfiber cloth to remove dust from all other places on the microscope that aren't lenses. You'll note that modern microscopes have optical systems that are designed to keep dust from interfering with image formation as much as possible. There are only really a few spots where dust will create shadows in the final image. If you're seeing shadows of dust when you look into a microscope, there are a couple places to check. On top of the condenser lens, on top of your microscope slide, inside the trinocular port, or on the protective glass of the camera, on the eyepieces themselves, and inside the objective itself. This one's pretty rare there. There usually isn't any dust that gets inside of the objective unless you're removing the objective and leaving it out. Note that dust will show up significantly worse if you're using the condenser with the iris closed down to a small aperture or using dark field illumination mode. Cleaning oils or dust that can't be removed with the dust blower. It's inevitable that if you use the eyepieces enough, your eyelashes will touch the lenses and contaminate them with oils that will cause dust particles to stick to the glass stronger than what you can blow off with the hand dust blower. Start by blowing off any loose dust and then drop some regular old isopropyl alcohol, aka rubbing alcohol, onto the eyepiece. Using either the included lens paper or just a clean microfiber cloth, wick away the majority of the isopropyl alcohol. Now, because the lens is below the metal of the eyepiece, we will need to wad up the lens paper and push it into the lens. You shouldn't really need to apply any significant pressure though, but you do need to apply enough so that the lens cleaning paper makes full surface contact with the lens. Wipe in a linear motion until the lens looks clean. If you're unable to get rid of streaks, you may need to use a brand new dry lens tissue to remove the remaining residue. You can use the exact same method for cleaning off oil immersion fluid after using an oil immersion objective. You can use gloves for this process or just don't touch the surface that you're putting into contact with the lens. These glass optics don't have any special coatings, so we can get away with pretty straightforward, unsophisticated cleaning techniques. I don't recommend that you use this method to clean optics outside of this context. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, reach out to us at info at and we hope you have a blast on your new adventure.